One of my favorite first time home buyer programs is a killer program. Why is that? It is because it allows for a smaller down payment and it allows the client to count rents off a mother-in-law apartment. As I said, this is one of my favorite first-time homebuyer programs. It's from Fannie Mae, it's called Home Ready. There is a sister program with Freddie Mac called Home Possible. I'll cover that on another day. They are very similar, but there are some differences in the Home Ready program that I really like. So what is a first-time homebuyer? Someone who is buying their first home, or they haven't owned a home in the last three years. This product can be used for a purchase or refinance, and it does allow for a client to own another piece of property, another mortgage, but the down payment requirements change. So on this, for a first time home buyer, you can get in as little as 3% down. It is conventional, and that is really a benefit to the client if they have a credit score 680 or higher. Uh, this program allows to go down to 620, but anything below 680 really does not make sense. We should go FHA on those. Uh, 700 plus is really the sweet spot for this program. This loan product also allows for a mother-in-law apartment and border income. The mother-in-law apartment, it basically means an accessory unit. Uh, you have to have a bathroom and a kitchen in that unit. If the prior own, owner rented it out, they want to see the lease agreements on those to determine how much you can rent it for. Or if it hasn't had uh, renters in it, we can add that onto the appraisal and the appraiser will do a rent analysis on the unit and tell us how much he can get on rents. Border income is where you rent out a room to a roommate, collect rents on that. You can count that except that you need to have a 12 month history of doing that with that documented. So most of my clients don't have that history even if they are renting rooms to roommates. Another cool feature of this product is that it allows for gifts from family members, grants, and community seconds. The other thing with this is, I'll show an example here in, the, in a minute, but typically this loan program will carry lower interest rates and lower mortgage insurance than a standard conventional loan. This is a huge benefit to the client, especially in this market right now where we're trying to get the lowest possible monthly payment. And I'll show this example to you here in a couple minutes and it'll demonstrate the power of this program. Another benefit is that you can have co-signers on this loan program, family members, uh, co-signers with you on there. We call them non-occupant co-borrowers. This product is also fabulous for condos uh, because we often run into FHA or condos that are not approved with FHA. Being able to go conventional on this is a huge benefit in that area. Now a few things you need to know about this loan program. Number one, the borrowers are required to do a home ownership course. This is an online course, it's free, it's easy, and in fact, I recommend it for all first-time home buyers. Uh, it's just required on this one, it's a really great course. Uh, second is that there are income limits. So if you make too much money, you're not eligible for this home ready product. Now there are some tips and tricks we have to this, but first I wanna show you where you can look up and see how much your income limit is. I will post down in the episode notes the link for looking up the area median income but if you want to use your browser, just type in Fannie Mae AMI Lookup Tool, search that, it'll come right off the top, top hit. When you click on it, it'll give you an opportunity to put in a specific address, zip code, city and state to look up that area median income. It'll bring up a map and it'll have this uh, kind of greenish box that shows you the area median income. For my zip code where my office is, the AMI is 96,000. 
The Home Ready loan uses 80% of that. So that's 76,800 where I'm at. So if your income is over that, you don't, you don't fit into this loan product. If you're below that, no problem. You still have to meet the debt ratio requirements and still qualify that way. Now, if you're over, it's still worthwhile to get with a knowledgeable, qualified loan officer and see if there is a way to get under the income limit. Let me give you a few examples how that can happen. Say that there are two borrowers on a loan and both make 72,000 base salary a year. We would remove or see if we could do the loan in just one borrower's name because the one borrower is under the limit. As long as the debt ratios work for that one borrower, this totally is feasible and doable. The reason why is that in Home Ready, they only count towards the limit or measure the limit by the borrower that is on the loan. So that that's different than like a USDA loan where they count all the household income even if they aren't on the loan. So there's a difference for you there. Another idea would be that let's say a borrower makes 72,000 base a year but then they have bonuses or uh, commissions that are added on top of that. We can qualify the borrower just on base only and then set aside that overtime commission bonus or whatever it is and not use that in the qualifying. Again that client still needs to be able to qualify just on base but that's another way to fit into this product. I do want to mention also that if you have a co-signer joining you on this loan the income that that co-signer makes combined with the primary borrower those total together and you still have to fit under the 80 percent of the area median income that that is a typical hurdle that we run into but just something to be aware of and look at but talk to a qualified loan officer about this because uh, there are some other options and other ways of getting things done here Let's take a look at our loan here, laying side by side the 30-year home ready against a standard 30-year conventional. And then I'm throwing in also a third option here, which is the FHA 3.5% down payment. In the scenarios here, we're going with a 740 credit score. I'll show you a 680 in a minute and show you how that changes. But we're doing a 425 purchase price uh, some of the things to note here in this chart, very cool, is that the interest rate on the home ready is 4.99, and that is as of July 19th, 2022. The conventional is up at 5.375, so you can see there's a big benefit in the interest rate right there. Now, the FHA carries a lower interest rate of 4.625, highlighted there in yellow and that, that's a benefit for the FHA. But once you add in the mortgage insurance, you'll be able to see here that the Home Ready is a more favorable loan than FHA. Now, monthly payment, total monthly payment, when we add in uh, the taxes insurance and mortgage insurance that favors the Home Ready, you can see it's $25.39 a month versus FHA $26.02. Along this monthly savings line, you can see that the 30-year conventional standard is $135 worse a month versus FHA, which is $62 worse a month than the home ready. Pretty cool. Uh, also take a note a look at cash to close. Very much favors the home ready loan over FHA and the fi first five years of cost that favors the home ready over those other two products. Let's take a quick look at what the mortgage insurance is because as I mentioned before, some of the advantages of home ready are number one, counting rents off an accessory unit if you need that. Number two, lower rates and lower mortgage insurance. I guess that's number three. But here we can show you that the mortgage insurance based on a 740 FICO score and 3% down payment 
look how much lower the mortgage insurance is on the home ready loan versus the standard conventional and the FHA. That's one of the big advantages of this loan product. Earlier I mentioned that as the credit scores get lower, FHA may become a more favorable loan option for clients. So let's look at this. This is the same purchase price, same scenario, same down payment, except that we are now going to a 680 FICO. And you'll see here that the interest rate has not changed on Home Ready, still at 4.99. That's phenomenal. But that monthly payment now has jumped up because the mortgage insurance have, has moved up because of the lower FICO, the 680 FICO. Uh, you can see that the rate and mortgage insurance on the standard conventional has jumped up, but with FHA, nothing has changed. So in this situation that we're looking at, FHA would be the better option. Let me show you the details here. So let's look closer at this mortgage insurance. So on the Home Ready, you can see that our mortgage insurance has jumped up to 243 a month. It's still a little bit less than FHA, but FHA rate is still down at a 4.625. So it gives our client the lower monthly payment. Now, in a situation where it's just straight looking at evaluating monthly payment, this FHA loan could be better than Home Ready. However, there are other factors that come in. For example, if our client was buying a condo that was not approved with FHA, even though the monthly payment is slightly higher with Home Ready, you'd want to do Home Ready. Or maybe you're buying in a county where you've hit the FHA loan limit and now you're a little bit higher than that. Home Ready works, FHA will not. So the, every scenario is different, but you can see in this demonstration that as the credit scores move down to 680 and below, FHA becomes more favorable as far as monthly pay, total monthly payment goes. Let's take a look at what's happening in the market. Right now, I want to show you what's going on with interest rates. As you can see on our chart, we've been really kind of moving sideways. Just as a reminder, this is an inverse chart. As the chart moves up, rates move down. As the chart moves down, rates move up. But we're really going sideways. We're kind of stuck in this channel um, between some resistance points there. The, um, 25-day moving average, 50-day moving average in there. So the Federal Reserve, um, I think they're purposely leaking information out to people. Based on inflation numbers, the stock market, the experts all thought that the Federal Reserve could do a 100 basis point raise. They were calling for that. The Federal Reserve leaked out to the media and said, we are sticking to 75 basis points. That was positive for the stock market, not super positive for the mortgage rates. But we continue to see recession signs pointing to that coming up, um, unemployment ticking up, the inverted yield curve. The other big one that we're seeing is builders are slowing down on how many new starts that they're doing. They're just taking off the, their foot off the pedal a little bit. But moving forward, we still firmly believe we have a recession coming. That does not equal a housing crisis. We believe that as the inflation gets under control, the recession hits, we are going to have lower rates next year. When that hits, we don't know exactly. Thanks for watching. My name is Miles Pitcher. Feel free to ever reach out if you have questions, scenarios. Uh, anything I can help you with, even if it's in a state that I'm not licensed in. Have a great week.